Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. From Madras, Oregon. That's it, I see Yeah, that. you can see I that, see yeah. That. All the way to Charleston, South Carolina. I'm speechless, I'm literally speechless. Millions of Americans looked up as darkness descended in the middle of the day. This is something that I will be dreaming about and thinking about for the rest of my life. Crowds erupted in Carbondale, Illinois, where the darkness lasted longer than nearly anywhere else in the country. What great timing. Look at that. I'm so glad we got to for one see second. it. For many, wow. oh, that was so cool. So cool. <laughs> okay. The holdup did not overshadow nature's rare spectacle in the sky. Actually getting to see one in person was phenomenal. So this is nothing, the traffic's nothing. If that's the price you gotta pay, okay, that's good. If you miss this one, don't worry. The next one is in 2024, and it will cover much of the eastern and central U.S. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. We need to know the Bible prophecies of the end time, especially the prophecies surrounding the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Jesus was emphatic that his followers should hope for his return, expect his return, and pray for his return. Luke 21:36. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. On Monday, April 8, 2024, the United States will witness a solar eclipse that could have profound prophetic consequences. The show in the sky tonight, a lunar eclipse just weeks ahead of the solar eclipse that will have tens of millions of people watching across the U.S. So this lunar eclipse tonight is sort of like the appetizer, if you will. It's just a taste of the rare phenomenon that we'll get to witness in just about two weeks. This morning, the countdown is on. Just 15 days to go until the once in a generation total solar eclipse. Get ready for a full moon lunar eclipse on March 25th, 2024. You can get a head start on eclipse viewing early Monday morning when there will be a partial lunar eclipse between 1 and 5 a.m. Eastern. The sun will be on one side of the Earth and the moon will be on the opposite side of the Earth. A little before 1 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, the moon will enter the shadow, the partial shadow of the Earth, and it'll get a little bit dimmer. But of course, the hottest ticket in town, the total solar eclipse on April 8th, four total minutes plunging sky watchers from daylight into darkness. A cosmic event for the ages, shaping up to be the hottest ticket in town. On April 8th, a total eclipse of the sun will plunge millions of viewers from daylight into darkness for more than four captivating minutes in parts of the country. And excitement is already building as so-called eclipse tourists rush to book travel to be in its path. Literally, the stars are aligning. The total eclipse will span a 115-mile wide path across 13 states from Texas to Maine. That's nearly twice as wide as the last major eclipse in 2017, and it will also last twice as long. Towns and cities lucky enough to be in the path of totality have been preparing for months, if not years, like the small city of Columbus, Indiana. I feel like we've kind of uh, hit the cosmic lottery. We're planning, you know, downtown festivals with bands playing and vendors and food trucks. Bell County, Texas, already declaring a state of emergency because its population of nearly 400,000 could double, maybe even triple. Everything from our first responders 
to our healthcare systems, to our fueling stations, to our highways, to our emergency management stations, and more. All of these could be severely strained by the influx of people. Still, the owners of the Mint restaurant and bar are looking forward to the economic boon. I'm excited about an insurgence of tourism. Hotel rates are spiking throughout the eclipse's path. But in Carbondale, Illinois, Doy Gorton refused to raise the price of his rental listing. It's a time to gather together and, and connect with, you know, people with our shared humanity. What it's not a time to do is rip people off and to make a quick buck. Some resorts offering luxury cosmic themed stays for thousands of dollars. Others will get the chance to catch the eclipse from the sky. Delta offering a flight from Austin to Detroit to give onlookers an out of this world view. And guys, that flight sold out within 24 hours. Today, we're going to talk about things that you might see other than that main event, which of course is the star of the show, so to speak. The first thing that you might see even a little bit before totality is Venus will start to appear. It will be about 15 degrees from the sun. It'll be pretty bright, probably the brightest object in the sky other than the corona of the sun that you're enjoying around that right. moon. And then next, this won't happen until you actually see totality. You might be able to see Jupiter, which will be about 30 degrees from the sun, and it will be a little bit dimmer, but I still think you'll be able to see it with the naked eye based on the calculations that we're seeing. Um, all of this is, of course, contingent upon clear skies and no clouds. Now, here's what you might not get to see, but it's a possibility. This is 12P, which is the Pons Brooks Comet. It comes around every 71 years. Now, the reason that you might be able to see this with the naked eye versus just a telescope is because this comet is known for flare-ups. Oh. It's basically a ball of dirt and ice. So chunks of it routinely break off mm -hmm. and it causes a much brighter flare as it's traveling across the night sky. It actually, because of the way it's shaped right now, it looks like it has devil horns because the way chunks have broken off. Genesis 1, 14 through 16. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Signs is the Hebrew word oath, which means a signal, literally or figuratively, as a flag, beacon. Genesis 1.14 can be translated like this. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signals, beacons, and seasons, and for days and years. God plainly tells us in Scripture. He uses the sun, moon, and stars as signs, and we should be watching as God has something to show us. In the book of Luke, Jesus' disciples asked him about the signs of the times and the end of the age, as we read in Luke 21.7. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Jesus answered his disciples and proclaimed this in Luke 21, 25 through 28. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Jesus goes on to warn his disciples about not getting caught up in the cares of this life, and how important it is to watch and pray, as we read in Luke 21, 34-36. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day, come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass 
and to stand before the Son of Man. The total eclipse of the Heart Festival gets underway here at the Russellville Soccer Complex on Saturday, April 6th, and then on Monday, April 8th. As of right now, 216 couples will be getting married. It's free. All you need is a marriage license, and today, some couples were in town doing just that. It just seems like the coolest wedding that you could ever have. Carlotta Cox and Matthew Holloway are from Knoxville, Tennessee. For two years, they've been planning where to watch the total eclipse. Our original destination was Maine, um, but totality up there is like two minutes, and then we were looking for something where the totality was longer, and it was here in Arkansas, and then we started looking at private events that were going on, and this is what we found. And I was like, you need to figure something out. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we staying? Because rooms were just kept rising and rising. The couple was not planning on getting married until they heard about the elope at the eclipse. And today, they get their marriage license. He's just my soulmate. Like, we, when we met, it was just something different, and he had a good sense of humor. I was like, hey, look, here's us an opportunity, once in a lifetime type thing. It's something that's big. We never really had anything big or major happen to either one of us. Katie Bauckham and Nicholas Blackwell are also into each other and the eclipse. So growing up, my grandpa, we would always watch like the planets and anything that had to do with anything in the universe, really. Um, so I knew a lot more about it. And I was actually pregnant with him, the last one we had. States as far away as New York, California, Florida, uh, Washington, uh, Montana, there, there are people from all over the United States coming. Rodney Williams is the festival organizer. Forbes.com listed the Total Eclipse of the Heart Festival as the number one of their top eight festivals. National Geographic listed Elope at the Eclipse as the number one place to get married. Williams says the Elope at the Eclipse is a once in a lifetime opportunity for many couples to say, I do. The ceremony, uh, the wedding cake, the drink we toast with, and live entertainment for their first dance, uh, all free of charge. And while it is called elope at the eclipse, the couples we talked to say they're not keeping any secrets. Everybody knows this. Uh, I got uh, my buddy and his wife are coming out with us. Jesus said he would return when our days parallel the days of Noah, as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. People are going to be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, just like any other day, when suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye, the rapture will occur, just as God saved Noah and his family from the flood in an ark. I believe God is soon to save his church from the tribulation in an event called the rapture, in which millions of Christians will vanish from earth in the twinkling of an eye to be with our Lord and Savior, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Just as God wiped out every one but eight people from the human race in Noah's day with a flood for being wicked and unrepentant in their sin, God's next judgment on the human race is called the seven-year tribulation, where God will release 21 judgments on a wicked, unrepentant, and unbelieving world. I implore you, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to do so today, as I believe God is soon to rapture the church. On August 21st, 2017, there was a total solar eclipse that spanned the contiguous United States from coast to coast. On Monday, April 8th, 2024, there will be another total solar eclipse that will span the contiguous United States, marking America with an X. This is a disturbing sign as the definition of X doubt means to eliminate, delete, or eradicate something. And if this wasn't disturbing enough, the Pons Brooks Comet, also known as the Devil Comet, will be visible during the 2024 total solar eclipse. If that wasn't enough, a city by the name of Rapture, Indiana, is in the path of totality for the total solar eclipse of 2024. And if this still wasn't enough, 
the eclipse will literally go through the city of Jonah, Texas, and through seven towns in North America named Nineveh, drawing parallels to the biblical story of Jonah and the city of Nineveh in the Bible. Jonah preached repentance to the people of Nineveh, and they repented and were saved from destruction. The watchmen of our time have been preaching for years of God's coming judgment on America, and for the most part has fallen on deaf ears. I believe it is a strong possibility God gave America its Nineveh moment during the solar eclipse of 2017. America has become a cesspool of wickedness and moral rot, and instead of repenting, America is blaspheming the name of God and remains unrepentant in their sin. Solar eclipses are not always a sign of God's judgment, but in Scripture, the darkening of the sun is associated with forthcoming judgments at the hand of God. Joel, in his prophecy of the great and awesome day of the Lord, declares, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Apostle John, in his depiction of earth's last days, writes, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. I believe it to be a strong possibility that the coming solar eclipse on April 8th has possible implications of coming judgment on America. Judgment is always an act of God's justice against sin, and America is definitely ripe for sentencing. America has become a wellspring of moral depravity, and its influence is global. On April 8, 2024, the sun will turn black across America. Will 2024 turn out to be one of the most meaningful years for Bible prophecy that we have ever seen? Is God's judgment on the United States coming, and along with it, the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? I don't really know. Jesus did tell us to watch and pray. So, that's what I am doing. I am watching and praying. Are you? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. 
God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless.